Bonjour, année 10 et bonne année. That's hello year 10 and happy new year. Um, a strange way to start the new year and who knows when we'll see each other again face to face. But in the meantime, for as long as we are told to do so, we will be continuing the course um, via online learning. I will be putting up your le lessons to keep you going until I see you again on the Moodle page. Um, as ever, I will put a link to all the resources for those lessons in the class team. So log in every Tuesday morning, follow the links, follow the instructions, and we can try and make as much progress as we possibly can. Um, this lesson is the start of the new topic, entertainment and leisure. If you've got your conversation booklet in front of you, you'll notice the big grid. We're on the first column. We've done the first two, which was technology and social media and self and relationships. We did health and fitness back in the original lockdown when you were still kind of in year nine. We are now on the entertainment and leisure topic and we'll try and get through that, meaning that we will still be on course to, to finish this, uh, finish everything in time. Okay, so. The fact that you are watching this video and listening to me talking would suggest that you found the resources um, well enough. There is a worksheet that goes alongside this video. Please download that, complete all of your work on that worksheet and if you want it marked you can upload it to Moodle. If you were just doing the work in your French books that's absolutely fine as well, I can just mark it when I see you next. And I can take your books in or you can send me a picture of the work that you do. So on to the lesson then. I'm going to talk first of all about modal verbs. Um, important that you don't get too bogged down in the fact that modal verbs is a bit of a, a fancy phrase. I'll explain what they are in a second but it will really help you improve your speaking and writing. And the aim here is to learn how to use a couple of phrases using the phrase je dois. Now I have mentioned this one before, just before Christmas, before we locked down. And then we learned how you can uh, respond or not respond to invitations. Now then, it has been a very long time since we've seen each other and I wonder how much French we've even considered um, over the holidays. So for that reason, when you look at exercise 1A on your... Um, on your worksheet, it's talking about a, some verbs. We just want to see how many verbs you can remember. Now, you were never, ever, ever going to know enough verbs. I've mentioned before that there's probably about 12,000 verbs in the French language. The more you know, the better, of course. So, with exercise 1A, you just write down these verbs in French. Now, your first one is to listen. And you'll see that I have put the number of letters there as signified by the dashes and you can just write your answers on the sheet so we've got to listen to eat to watch now these first three I would expect you to know to live now there are two verbs for to live one of them is a seven letter word the other is a five letter word we've got to talk and I'd expect you to know that one to travel To share, this is a recap then, we've used this verb in the last topic, technology and social media, so I'm hoping you would remember that one. To earn, this is the one that I think you might not know. Not to worry, give it a go. To go out, as in out, out, like these ladies are doing. To think and to learn. Now it's not an issue if you don't know them all, do the ones you know first of all, type them up. And if you need to do a little bit of research, I would recommend using wordreference.com, changing the subject to, sorry, changing the language from to, in, to French to English and going from there. Okay, now then, exercise 1B, it's linked to exercise 1A of course, and we have a little bit more, probably an easier task here. Matching the infinitives, that's the form of the verb you'd find in a dictionary, to their English counterparts. So, on the sheet, you can just simply draw arrows if you'd like. So, you match up parler to whatever is the French translation in your opinion. 
there it is and there's a few there that might have come up come across in exercise 1a and there's a couple of others that i wonder if you can uh, figure out so as you can see this will now provide you the answers parler of course to speak what would be a really good idea, and it's going to sound really awkward and a little bit weird. As I go through these answers, it would be brilliant if you could say the French after me. Now, it's going to be a bit strange sitting in your bedroom just saying a bit of random French, but I am concerned that the impact of these lockdowns is going to mean that we can't speak and listen very well. Um, so I'll just say this word parler three times and you say it three times as well. Parle, parle, parle. You'll notice that the E and the R sound is an A sound. Parle. As we know, manger, softly to eat. Manger, manger, manger. And you, manger, manger, manger. Sautir. This was to go out, as in out, out. Sautir. Sautir. Apprendre. Prendre. Now it's a bit of a longer word. I'm taking my time. Apprendre. Apprendre to learn. Next, number five. Habiter to live. Silent H. Habiter. 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 We use je habite quite often. Next one. Going back to the technology and social media uh, content. Partager to share. Pa J, that G is soft. Partager. Voyager to travel. Voyage. Kind of makes sense. Voyager. Your next one is not one that we come across very often. Technically, I guess it's a bit of a slang verb. Bavarder. Bavarder. To chat. Bavarder. I guess you could call that a synonym for parler. Bois, we should know, to drink. Bois, bois, bois. Why focus on the pronunciation? Well, sometimes. Hopefully not at your level now. But O and an I together is not oi like it is in French. It's a wa sound. Bois, bois, bois. Number 10. Choisir. Listen to that sound at the start. Choisir as opposed to ch. It's a sh. Choisir, of course, kind of looks like it to choose. Écoute, I think we know. Écoute, écoute. Devenir, devenir. This is a new one. We may not know it, so it's new to us. To become, devenir. Now I don't know how often you might use this. Perhaps it's more suited to the world of work topic when you're older. You like to become, I don't know, a scientist or whatever. Devenir. Jouer is a basic. We know that. The soft J. Jouer to play. Joué, joué, joué. Practice that soft J sound. Joué. Dépenser to spend. Dépenser. Dépenser. And finally, louer is the only one that's left to rent or to hire. Louer. Louer. Going for this one because it can be a little bit. What's the word? Off putting because of all the vowels, but it's easy enough. Louer. Louer. Okay, so you fill those in on your sheet under exercise 1b and we move on to the next topic. But just bear in mind, if you remember from exercise 1a, I mentioned that there are two ways to say to live. The other one, the five letter word there is vivre. Vivre. Okay, so modal verbs and the whole point of this uh, lesson. What is a modal verb? Not even sure if you get taught this formally in English. So I will just explain. A modal verb is a verb, a doing word, that expresses necessity or possibility. It's something that expresses something that's absolutely necessary or something that is possible. Examples in English will include things like must, shall, will, should, would, can, could, may and might. As you can see, those words in English, they all express necessity or possibility. An example in French here, tu veux aller au cinéma ce soir? Do you want to go to the, to the cinéma ce soir? Désolé, sorry, mais je ne peux pas, I can't, parce que je dois rester à la maison, because I have, I have to stay at home. So je dois, 
I have to. This is a key word. If you've seen it before, my apologies. A bit of revision doesn't uh, doesn't hurt anybody. Je dois. Make a note of this somewhere. Je dois. The S is silent. O and I like a wa sound. Je dois. Right, so the three key verbs when it comes to modal verbs, we've got devoir, which is to have to or to must, and there's no coincidence there that devoir is also homework, because you have to do it, or you must do it. We've got pouvoir, to be able to, or can, and vouloir, to want to. Now, these are modal verbs, and they are highly irregular, as you'll see in a second. So, just going to be using our voices again practicing with our accents again it's going to be a little bit awkward for you but practice makes perfect as we know so things that you have to do recapping things that you do to help at home uh use a picture of a car therefore je dois laver la voiture feel free to repeat after me je dois laver la voiture je dois faire les courses and you je dois faire les courses to do the shopping Je dois faire mes devoirs. Je dois faire mes devoirs. I have to do my homework. Picture of a bedroom there. Je dois ranger ma chambre. And you. Je dois ranger ma chambre. Je dois rester à la maison. Je dois rester à la maison. And you. Je dois promener le chien. Je dois promener le chien. I have to walk the dog. And you, je dois promener le chien. Je dois faire le ménage. I have to do the housework. Je dois faire le ménage. Finally, je dois aller voir ma grand-mère. Je dois aller voir ma grand-mère. So yes, it's awkward to just repeat after me on your own in your house, but again, we need to ensure that we don't lose our accents and we get confident in speaking in French. Hopefully you might have noticed something that je dois, the next word, is always, always an infinitive. Meaning, that word means to do to something. So to do, to tidy, to stay, to go, so on and so forth. All right, so exercise two then on your worksheet will be a very quick one, just logically. For these eight statements, would you say je dois or je veux? So je dois, I have to, and je veux, a new key uh, phrase for us, meaning I want. Logically, which of those statements would you put in front of sentences A to H? And you can type those in the text box, which is on exercise two. Okay, so one for your books, or wherever you're writing all of your um, all of your answers, all of your work. Je veux, I want to. Notice that the X is silent. Je veux, I want to. Je peux, I can. And as we've seen, je dois. As I mentioned before, all of these are followed by an infinitive. For example, je veux manger, I want to eat. Je peux manger, I can eat. Je dois manger, I have to eat. Important that you remember that if you're going to use one of these fancy phrases and they do get you marks, they have to have an infinitive verb coming after them. That's what I've said by here, look, okay? So, exercise number three, I believe it is, on your worksheet is again simply just matching things up um, giving excuses then so in the red box I've got je ne peux pas I can't parce que je dois because I have to or I must and then simply matching things up I've done number one for you promener le chien take the dog out and all we need you to do on the worksheet is to again add arrows to what you feel are the correct answers At this point, um, if you want to pause the video or whatever, when I start speaking again, I'm going to go through the answers with you, clearly. So, here we go. Fais mes devoirs, do my homework. Garder mon petit frère, 
Look after my little brother. Laver la voiture. Wash the car. And skip number four because it's been done. Ranger ma chambre. Tidy my bedroom. Rentrer avant 22 heures. Go back home before 10 p.m. Rester à la maison. Stay at home. Sortir avec mes parents. Go out with my parents. And finally, aller voir ma grand-mère to go and visit my grandmother. So, so far these exercises are quite straightforward. They're just refreshing our memories, getting us back into French mode. Okay, so this is the important bit. There's a little bit of grammar for you. We're going to be talking about the three verbs there. Devoir, pouvoir, and vouloir. To have to, to be able to, and want. And to want to, we need to be filling in the verb in its entirety. I would recommend that you spend a bit of time on this. Definitely get a completed copy in your book. You'll know it looks more difficult than it is, right? Now I'm going to take this bit by bit. So, remember that going down the side, you've got your pronouns. You've got I, you, he, she, and one. We, you, plural, and they. Pouvoir and vouloir are quite similar in their spell, and it's usually just a... Um, a letters difference so this completed grid will need to go in your book as I've said before the nature of the exams that you do as long as you can use the je form of each of these verbs or je dois je peux je veux you're gonna be okay you know obviously the more you bring in other people the better your marks get but generally talking in the first person is absolutely fine so je dois je peux je veux tu dois tu peux tu veux Notice that the je and two versions are spelt exactly the same. Let's give this a go then. Bit of a uh, bit of thinking now. If il, elle, en, peu ends in a T and starts with a P, what might the vouloir version be? Think about it. Devoir will give you doit and then vouloir the. Not not doit or peut or vert peut. Nous devons, nous pouvons, nous voulons. Vous voulez, vous devez, pardon. Vous pouvez, vous voulez. And finally, your last one there. Funny word to say there. Il ou elle peuvent. At this point, pause the video. Make sure you get a completed copy of this into your book. Study it for a little bit. Spend a couple of minutes just looking at it, you know, um, covering it and trying to spell things out again before you move on to the next exercise on the worksheet, which is here. So, this is about finding the errors. So, a girl called Pauline who's written a little letter and she's asking you to find the 12 spelling errors. Now, a hint here is that, <coughs> excuse me, all of the errors are linked to the spelling of these three verbs. So on the worksheet, all you need to do is highlight those 12 errors, and then you need to correct them. Okay? So at this point, pause the video. Do that task, because when I start talking again, or when you press play again, all of the answers are going to be selected and highlighted. Okay, so your first error is here. Next, here. I'm going to go through all of them. There we go. So there's a mixture here, actually. We've got the wrong spelling on some of the modal verbs. As you can see with number one, they put P-E-U-T, that should be with an X. With number two, that should be D-O-I-S because you've looked at your verb grid. Now the next one, they're trying to say I have to stay at home, but we know that this next word has to be a verb, so it's reste. Similar for four and five, wrong spelling, no infinitive for number five. Moving on, here we are. What's more, next weekend they want to, to go to uh, Cali, but it's the wrong spelling. Number seven, then, devant, instead of doivant, they got a bit confused. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten, look, they've used on per, 
really well. But the next verb, the next word, sorry, needs to be a verb. So, number 11, sorry, got ahead of myself. And finally, there we go. Excellent. So those are the corrections. Moving on to, act to the next activity where it asks you to read the email and find the French for the following expressions in blue. Okay, next reading activity. Here, now this is a bit squished as you can see. So we've got Lola talking about things that she'd like to do. She says, Coucou, which is slang for hi. Je voudrais bien aller au concert de Kyo. Kyo is a French artist. Avec toi. Mais papa dit que je ne peux pas parce que je n'ai pas suffisamment travaillé au collège. Et c'est pour ça que mes notes sont mauvaises. Il dit que je dois rester à la maison et bosser tous les week-ends. Bosser just means to work. It's a slang term. D'habitude, usually, je m'entends bien avec lui, mais parfois, il est trop sévère. Now, other than the words that I just clarified, I'm hoping that the language there isn't too difficult. Next one. Salut, Mohamed. Je suis désolé, mais maman, mother, ne me laisse pas sortir demain. She won't let me go out tomorrow. C'est parce que mes grands-parents viennent nous rendre visite et elle dit que nous devons aider à la maison, mon frère et moi. Nous devons ranger nos chambres, faire la vaisselle après tous les repas et même laver la voiture. Je suis furieuse contre elle. So Julie feels very strongly about why she can't go out. And finally, salut Clément, this is Akim talking. Merci pour l'invitation à ta fête. Mais on ne peut pas venir. Nabila et moi, parce que nos parents veulent partir pour le week-end en Bretagne, elle, et ils disent qu'on doit aussi y aller. On ne veut pas, mais on n'a pas le choix. Ce n'est pas juste, amuse-toi bien quand même. Ok, so you read these three. And you answer these questions. However, the plot twist here is respond in French. That looks really difficult, but actually, argue, you could argue that's slightly easier because you can literally steal from the texts. Let's take number one, for example. The question's asking you, pourquoi est-ce que, why is it that? One, Lola has to stay at home this weekend. Well, start every answer like this. Parce que, L or E, if it's a boy, she has to do her schoolwork. Done. And you can steal from the text. Or, you know, um, what's the word? Reword in a way that suits yourself. So for number two, I'd be saying, Julie doit ranger, ranger sa chambre et faire la, va la vaisselle parce que... And then whatever it is that is said in the text. And there's six there for you to do. As long as you understand what the question means, you should be okay. So number three, Akim ne peut pas accepter l'invitation de Clément. Why can't? Hakim accepts Clermont's invitation. Lola s'énerve contre son père. Why is it that Lola is annoyed with her father? Why is Julie furious against her mother, it means, but with her mother? And six, why is it that Hakim doesn't want to go to Brittany with his parents? If you can do this and do it well, you're on to a winner. Hence the nerdy face. Okay, next. Next will be the slide of answers. Now, obviously, your versions might be slightly different to mine, and, but that's okay. If you want yours to be double-checked, either email them to me or just upload the worksheet to Moodle, and I can go from there. Right, so, number one. Elle, Lola doit rester à la maison car elle n'a pas suffisamment travaillé au collège. Lola has stayed home because she hasn't sufficiently worked in school. Julie doit ranger sa chambre car ses grands-parents viennent rendre visite. She has to tidy her bedroom because her grandparents are coming to visit. Akim ne peut pas accepter l'invitation car ses parents veulent partir pour le week-end. He can't accept the invitation because his parents want to leave for the weekend. 4. Lola s'énerve contre son père, literally stolen from the question, car il est trop sévère, literally stolen from the text. He's too strict. 
Julie, a furious car, Elle doit, and she has to do all the clothes, whatever she says in the text, all the clothes that she has to do. Akim ne veut pas aller en Bretagne avec ses parents parce que il veut aller à une fête. So the trick here is not to get too freaked out or bogged down in the fact, oh God, it's all in French. Use the question, use the vocabulary that's in the text to help you and you might have to do a little bit of juggling with your word order, but it can lead you to the right answer. Okay, so your final task for this lesson will be to write a short email to a friend, make this up, saying that you can't attend his or her birthday and explaining why. Describe what you did last weekend and finally invite your friend out to the cinema on Friday. Of course, use any vocabulary you've got in your book. Use anything that's covered that's been covered in today's lesson. If you need a dictionary, that's fine. You can use dictionaries. If you want specific words, then try and use wordreference.com and upload that to Moodle along with your worksheet so that I can mark it. If there are any questions, please email me at colourdenem at hubcumry.net.